rigging out your camera is a true art form, according to YouTube. But to me, there is no such thing as a perfect camera rig because every gig that you do requires you to rethink your rig and to build it out to that specific gig. I really like to experiment with my rigs and see what works and what doesn't. So in today's video, I'd like to go over the four different rigs for the shoots that I do most. That is television, commercial, outdoor, and wildlife. So let's start with the first one, the television rig, which is this one, by the way. As you can see, it's pretty bulky, pretty big, but I build it out like this because I want that extra weight. I use this on my shoulder most of the time. So I'll show you. It is a Feezy T-plate, which is the industry standard for shoulder mounts. I put it on my shoulder and this is pretty much how I shoot for the entire day. Now, this is a very classic way of shooting, but to me, it's probably one of the nicest and prettiest looking because if you're walking after someone, you get the same kind of motion instead of, for example, when you work with the gimbal, you see this head bouncing up and down inside the frame. And when you do it like this, you'll get that same feeling. So you get a more up close feeling with it. Also, it just allows me to shoot for hours and hours on end because it is very comfortable actually. Now, a quick tip on shoulder mounting. It's very important that your rig is balanced. So if your rig is front heavy, it is very heavy on the arms. I put my cheek against this, uh, the side panel of the, of the FX6 and that just gives me a lot of contact points and it makes it super stable. So let's just go over the rig, what parts I use, and then move on to the next one. First, I add a VCT plate to my tripod. This is the industry standard solution for shoulder rigs. Then I add the shoulder rig itself, which consists of a shoulder pad and two handles, add a lens. This can, of course, be any lens. In this example, it is a vintage lens. Then I add my matte box, which in this example is a matte box that goes onto my rods. Then add my power solution with my transmitter for my director monitor. And then lastly, I add my monitor, which is the small HD7 Indie. Let's talk about the second rig, which is the commercial rig. As you can see, it's not so different from my TV rig. The only differences are there is no shoulder plate anymore and the monitor moved from this area to the back. The reason for that is because I don't use it on the shoulder, so it can have everything in one streamlined sort of way, I'd say, because dangling over here is not the best for balance and also it just looks a bit weird. I use a dovetail so I can slide it back and forth a lot more. So when I use bigger lenses, I have a lot more space and room to balance the camera on the gimbal. Uh, tripod, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so how I use this rig is usually I just hold it like this, all right? And then maybe I pull focus, so I hold my hand on the focus wheel. Now, sometimes I also keep it like this. This is also very comfortable. I just put my fingers on the um, rod, basically, and then I can pull focus with thumb and index finger and I just keep it against my body. This way I have a very stable setup and I can just move and do a lot. The only thing I cannot do is walk. So if I walk, a lot of stuff is shaking and that's not necessarily the best thing. So if I do walking shots, I typically hold it on the top handle and just kind of like use it as a steady cam, you know, because my arms are the, the spring operated arms, you know? So I just walk like this. That gives me the best result. Um, I also use an easy rig. Let me get that for you. So if I do very long interview takes, for example, and I don't necessarily need an eye level shot, I always use an easy rig because it just saves your back. I can stand like this and hold it very still for a long period of time. I can even put my hand in here and it just, saves me a lot of pulling and um, yeah, I can hold this for an hour and not move, which is very difficult for someone with ADHD, but you know, the easy rig makes it a lot harder, uh, easier, just like this. I'm not gonna stand still for an hour, but you get the picture. As mentioned, I use a 12 inch dovetail because I have more range whenever I use larger lenses. Then I have my rods, which in this case are carbon rods to save some weight. I put my matte box onto it, put my power solution onto it, and then finally I add my monitor. 
Next up is the wildlife rig. So this is actually my preferred setup because it has a lot of reach. That's of course because of the 200, 600. Now there are some issues. Whenever you use longer lenses, you typically don't have the space on your tripod to balance your camera on the tripod. So that's why I use a dovetail, which I already mentioned. This allows me to move the camera like this a lot more than whenever I only use a tripod plate. So let me pull back. I put it all the way in the back and then I have a little bit of slack still to play around with my uh, tripod plate. And this way I can perfectly balance my camera onto my tripod head. So what I do always is I loosen up my head to the uh, loosen, lo loosen it, lo loosed, most loose setting, I guess. And then I take it off and then I can see where, where it's falling toward. Now it's a bit back heavy, so I just put it forward a little bit. Now it's front heavy. Perfect. Now it's balanced, so your image will turn out a lot better. Because if you pan and tilt with an unbalanced rig, you'll most likely don't get the smoothest of results. So this is what I always do. Now, if I walk with my system, because you know normally I put it in my neck, but I typically just take it off like this, and then I just walk with this in one hand and the tripod on my shoulder, or I use the handle. You know, it's heavy, but you'll become a strong man or woman. So uh, yeah. So let's go over the parts that are different from the other rigs and then we'll move forward. For this, I use the same dovetail and the same rods. The only thing that is added is a lens support because heavy and large lenses require a lens support. Otherwise you'll break your mount and it's also not good for vibrations. Okay, last but not least, the outdoor rig. Now, as you can see, it's basically a stripped down version of all the previous ones. Um, and the reason for this is because I probably will walk around with this rig in the woods for hours and hours on end without putting it in my backpack. So I probably will just hold it like this, you know, just walk with my backpack on and hold it in my hands. So I want something that is very lightweight, but also gives me everything that I need in order to get the shot. So the most important part here is the plate that I uh, screw my camera onto, which is actually the plate that comes with the shoulder rig. Let me get it. So in this shoulder rig, there is a plate with some rods uh, attached to it, which is this one. And I really like this because now I can use a matte box without needing a big clunky base plate like this, which is another 400 grams to be able to use rods. So this saves me a lot of weight. The cool thing is, is that it's actually just a regular Manfrotto P-Long plate that works on every tripod out there. So that's nice. I run it on these normal, what are they? BPU, BPU 60 batteries. In here is a smaller one even, but I bring this one, another one, and then the smaller one, I can probably shoot on it an entire day. Sometimes two, depends on if I switch it on enough. Now, this rig is perfect for some situations, but there are some limitations. Those limitations are mainly that I don't have an external screen on there because it becomes too heavy. There are ways to do this, but I don't like to use another battery for that monitor. So you can actually get these BPU batteries with a DTAP port on it. So I can bring my small HD and just run the cable back into the, the rear. And that makes sure that you can use a monitor without having to bring 15 batteries or something like that. But to be honest, it becomes heavy and it becomes, you know, a bit out of balance. So I tend to use this and put the screen on full brightness and also use this very flimsy but useful sun hood, which is kind of nice, but it's flimsy, but it works. Um, now, another thing that you may think is why do I use this matte box and what kind of matte box is this even? This is the Focus MB20. 256. It's a four times four matte box, so it holds four times four filters. Um, and the reason I use it is because I have a vintage lens on here, so I don't like to use screw on matte boxes. So this one goes onto the rods. If I use, for example, the Sony 2470, I probably will use my Nissi matte box, which is right here. Uh, this is a screw on only. Um, and I really like it, but I don't like to use these kinds of matte boxes on a vintage lens because 
it jams the focus and I just, I'm kind of afraid to break the lens. So I always use a, a rod based matte box whenever I work with vintage lenses. Now you might also think, why do you use a matte box at all? Well, there's an internal ND filter in here, but if you shoot outside on bright daylight and you still want to use a 1.4 aperture, you definitely need an extra filter in your matte box because 2.1 stop ND in there is just not strong enough. So I always bring an extra 0.9 or three stops ND that I can then use in my matte box and then stop down on my internal ND. All right, guys, hopefully that was a clear picture of how I rig my camera systems. So again, four different rigs, four different ways to shoot. I could make 20 different rigs for 20 different ways to shoot. You know, sometimes I use this on a gimbal. Um, sometimes I use a bare, bare, bare bone. Uh, but, you know, I, I tend to just experiment with the way I rig things. Just take your time rigging your camera because it's a lot of fun. And um, yeah. It costs a lot of money because rigging parts are extremely expensive. But uh, that said, it's kind of necessary. Good luck on rigging your own camera. If you have any questions, just feel free to ask me and uh, till the next one. Peace.